This is Matthew Cratter from Trade University. And today I want to talk about big boy banker Ben getting his special trophy. I'm talking about Ben Bernanke winning the Nobel Prize in Economics. And he won this for his research, not just as Fed chairman, but also for his research when he was at Princeton on the role of bank failures and the Great Depression. So I thought I'd just run through his life very quickly in tribute. The first thing that happened to Ben was he got his big boy pull-up diapers, which was a very, very big step for him. He got to take his training wheels off at some point. And then shortly after that, big boy banker Ben, he saved the entire U.S. banking system. And what's even more important is he made sure that all bankers got their bonuses and that not a single U.S. banker or executive who helped to cause the great financial crisis in the housing bubble went to jail. So he really has been sort of a reverse Robin Hood, hurting the poor and protecting the rich. His money printers have done a tremendous amount of damage. He's become famous for a speech in 2002, where he said that the US government has a technology called a printing press that allows it to produce as many dollars as it wishes at essentially no cost. Ben Bernanke really was the father of money printers. He took what they'd been doing in Japan and he brought it to the US. I like this phrase, produce as many dollars as it wishes, as a central bank wishes, at essentially no cost, because the only cost really is working class people and people of color, rural households, etc. And we know that bankers don't care about these kinds of people. I like this headline from an opinion piece over at Bloomberg, how do we fix Bernanke's fixes? This is really a good question because once a country embarks down the road to money printing, it becomes almost impossible to ever go back. And this is really what Ben Bernanke should be getting this reward for, this award for, for making sure that the Fed money printers always had fresh toner and fresh paper. Unfortunately, the U.S. is never going to recover from big boy banker Ben's money printing from his quantitative easing. He set the stage for monetizing deficit spending in the U.S. In layman's term, terms, what this means is you just print money to pay for government spending. The government issues debt to pay for its spending, and then the central bank prints money and buys it. And of course, this always begs the question why we still need to pay taxes if the government can print whatever money it needs. Here is Ron Paul asking Bernanke in 2010 whether he would ever shrink the balance sheet again or whether this was a permanent monetization of the of, of federal deficit spending. And Bernanke replied that he will bring the balance sheet back to under a trillion dollars. That was back in 2010 when the balance sheet was above $2 trillion. And again, this is just the assets that the Fed owns that have been bought with printed money. So it's a good indicator of how the Fed is manipulating long-term interest rates and manipulating the economy. But basically that, that ratio, which was at about 2.3 trillion at the time, never came down during the rest of Bernanke's tenure. And it has only gone up from there. We're now, even with the Fed shrinking its balance sheet a little bit this year, we're still close to 9 trillion in the balance sheet. So this was another thing that Bernanke said he was going to do and did not do. The really sad thing is to give a Nobel Prize in economics to someone who was not able to see something that was very, very obvious to people who were paying attention, which was that all the subprime lending in the U.S. housing market and globally as well would eventually come home to roost and blow up the banks. In May of 2007, Bernanke said that the subprime mortgage woes will not seriously hurt the economy. He said a little bit later that he sees no spillover from all these mortgages blowing up. So what was the situation back then? I remember it very well because I was working in this space and I was talking to people like Michael Burry. U.S. banks levered 40 to 1, 50 to 1, which are very high leverage ratios. They were stuffed to the gills with subprime garbage that had been sliced and diced to make it look like AAA rated debt. If you saw the movie, The, the Big Short, you know all about this. There's a tiny sliver of equity at banks that could be easily wiped out if U.S. housing prices declined and you had waitresses and strippers each buying five houses. What could go wrong? Certainly nothing that a former Princeton professor, now Nobel Prize winner, could figure out. This was, of course, the great financial crisis, the global financial crisis of 2007 to 2008, where the entire U.S. banking system blew up 
and had to be bailed out by the Fed. Of course, it wasn't anyone's fault on Wall Street. No one got fined. No one went to jail, even people who seriously knew what they were doing. And if an MD could figure it out, if all these outsiders could figure it out, you would hope that the head of the Federal Reserve, who would go on to win a Nobel Prize as he did yesterday, you would hope that this guy would be paying attention. But that's not how America works. Fortunately for big boy banker Ben, the revolving door between regulators and Wall Street still worked very well in the 2010s, even if the whole financial system had already been destroyed. Ben Bernanke, after working for the Fed, went to work for Citadel of the Robin Hood saga fame. He also went to work for PIMCO. So two of the companies they had, that he had very close contact with as a regulator, he went there afterwards. After destroying everything, after starting the money printers, he went there to get rich. I think this is a pretty good example of big boy bankers Ben career where he gets a Nobel Prize. He's kissing Citadel Advisory. He's doing the uh, the dinner circuit where he gets paid two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars to give speeches, PIMCO Advisory, and he's only he comes in third, right behind QE Forever, quantitative easing, money printing forever, and double digit inflation forever. I think though that there was a grave injustice this year because Jerome Powell actually should have won that Nobel Prize in chemistry for turning the market into you know what. I think the Nobel Prize Economics Committee really missed out here. Hopefully they will make things right next year as we're in the depths of a global depression caused by central bankers. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. By the way, I just noticed this on Twitter. PayPal has no intention to find customers over misinformation, verify and Bloomberg report. Well, that's because they changed everything when we got on their back. So that's funny to see them lying as well. The whole system's corrupt. And I think that Bernanke winning a Nobel Prize is really the ultimate symbol of this. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next video.